we're going to start off with the basics of how do you show it. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right, right away. So you should see um, my screen here. We are going to go into the basics of show it. And um, so we're going to start off just in this section right here, home page. You see the pages, the blog templates, the site canvases, and site settings, site design and media settings. So very first, let's get into the site settings. This is where you will see the title of your site, um, the custom domain name, which you can edit if you need to, though, Jessica, you should be fine with this. Um, what you would do if you wanted to take it off of this thing, maybe to make you know some major edits, uh, maybe instead you just have like a standalone um, you know, homepage for this. Um, you could always change it to the domain name not assigned, in which case it'll send it back to a something dot show it site dot or show it dot site. You probably don't need this if it's already um, launched, so we will cancel back out of that. Save icon. That is the thing that shows up right here, like this little show it flag, this Gmail um, one, this Trello board. So that is going to be your fave icon. You can change that through your media library and you can add you know, an icon or an image that way. It usually, I believe it has to be a PNG file, which is typically a transparent file. Your vanity URL slug. Right now this is pretty much just for if you don't have your custom domain set. So this one in this case would be clw2017.showit.site. Again, if you already have your custom domain in there, you don't need to worry about that. And then the publish URLs. Again, vanity URL and then preview. This is your actual publish URL. Um, oh, actually, let's go back. So your blog as well. If your blog, if this doesn't say this, then it means that your blog is not synced up with your website, in which case you need it to be. So um, I believe you can also have this be like a different, you know, you can have a different blog connected to it. Typically, you just want the same website configured. So. And then um, Google Analytics, this is where you will put your ID. And your Facebook app ID, I believe this is where you'll put your pixel ID if you want to track pixel um, tracking. Next we'll go into the design settings. This is one of my favorite spots. <laughs> so you can actually have your entire co color palette right here. If you click this, you can change the colors. You can also grab the hex code. If you have had your website designed, I highly suggest you don't really touch this because it's easy to mess it up. So unless you have these numbers stored somewhere, make sure to don't really play with this because um, if you accidentally save, you can't really go back. So if you are going to fiddle with this, make sure you save these numbers first. Otherwise, here's your palette. Here are your, you know, your heading um, font choices. Oops, not Lady Westville. Um, and yeah, so you can change all kinds of stuff here. You can change the type of font, you can change the size, letter spacing, all of that stuff. Um, link colors, and you can change it for each one. If you change something in this side, you will also want to change it on your mobile one as well. So make sure to keep those synced up. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. So you can have, for instance, like over here, you can have this be this color, and your mobile one will still be this other one. So you need to change them individually, just so you know. Okay. So there is that design. Here are the fonts. Fonts can be just the tiniest bit tricky. Um, what you wanna do is most of your fonts will be in Google Fonts. You can choose a font. It'll show you the preview here. You can choose the style, which sometimes it'll say italic or bold or light, whatever the case may be. And once you are done previewing it, if you wanna actually add it to your lineup, you need to add font. So we don't want to add that one because you won't need it. We can actually get rid of this one as well, and we could probably get rid of this one, but I won't just in case. Um, Another thing, if you want to add a custom font, what you need to do is you need to find your WAF file. And that would be like, you know, font, basically font.waf or, you know, railway.waf, that kind of thing. So you want to find your font file. 
You will then upload it to your media library. So the way you would want to do this, oops, close it off saving. The way that you want to do this is you want to go to your media library. You will then upload file. And this is where you would upload your WAF file. We could do, mm, here we go. Here's a font file. So we would open this. I'm not going to do that right now because we don't need it here. Um, and then what we would do from there is it will look like this. So here is one of the WAF files that we have. So you don't need to click anything. As long as it is uploaded, then it's good. From there, you can go back to your design settings and to your fonts. It will then show up in here. So you'll click that. You will then name your font. And then you will add the custom font. We've already done that. It's right here. So just for your own reference, that is how you upload a custom font. So you actually have to name it and then make sure to actually add custom font. You're only seeing the preview over here. So if you don't actually add the font, then it won't actually add it to your lineup. So those are the settings. The next thing is the pages. You can click through and find you know, each of the pages here and your blog templates. Your blog is going to be a little bit different, um, and but those are all of the pages of your website. The single post acts as the template for the individual posts in your blog post. So if you go to your blog and you know you click that you want to read more, if you were to click that button in the live mode, then it would shoot over to the single post. And what it does is um, WordPress actually fills in the blanks here. So it fills in all of the content, it'll fill in the category, the date, blog post title, all that stuff. This is just kind of the generic outline of how that will look. The last thing that you'll see on this section is the site canvases. And site canvases are really handy. They are actually the canvases that allow you to make changes to only one canvas but have it act throughout the entire website. So for instance, your header, instead of having to go into every single website, or sorry, every single page and change, like maybe you wanna change this to about, instead of having to change it on every page, you now can only do it, you can do it so that it's only on this one site canvas. Once you have the site canvases applied to your pages, it will make those updates, um, automatically. So that's super, super handy. T saves a lot of time. <laughs> we were show it members before they had site canvases and oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> it was a bit of a pain. So that is this area. Um, canvas, let's see if we go to home and we go to your page. So you'll see when you're at your home, you'll see that each of these things are new canvases or they're you know different canvases. Every time one lights up, that means it's a different canvas. So what we would do to edit particular canvases is we would go to page and see now you can see all of these. The ones with the um, dashes like this, that texture, those are site canvases. So again, your footer, your header, and the mobile nav will typically always be site canvases so you don't have to edit them on each page. These ones are your um, canvases. So what we would do for this is now I am in this canvas, I can officially see each of the elements that are in this canvas. So here we have this wedding photo. We have this about photo or family photo. We have the titles, the happy couple, the family. We have the borders, see around these things. Oh yeah, that's fine. We have these borders, which are just rectangles essentially, shape and style rectangles. Um, and then we have the spacer border, which is actually for this next canvas. This isn't something you would typically have. But anyway, so here is where you can find the individual pieces of each canvas. Here is a quote canvas. Um, this is the, the uh, credit. So what I'm doing basically, what you'll see is that I am changing the names of each of these things. If you add in a text box, 
what it'll come up as is just text. So in order to, you know, just kind of keep the stuff organized, you can name some of that stuff. Um, if you, you might see that some of these things have this mobile icon grayed out. In other places, you might see the opposite. Maybe the desktop version is grayed out and the mobile is apparent, is, um, you know, white. In this particular situation, you'll notice that this canvas looks different from the um, desktop version. And the way to do that is that when you're working in Show It, one of the things that's actually kind of the hardest thing to remember to do, but it's very important, is to not delete things. So if you're working in desktop and you have your desktop all nice and beautiful, the worst thing that you can do is you can actually delete something. So what, you know, in here, I have this photo border or this border around, you know, the quote. And it looks, you know, all pretty over here. You know, here's the border right there. You can kind of see it. In the mobile site, I don't necessarily need that border because it looks, it just turns it into a little bit, um, you know, it's a little less streamlined, it's a little clunky. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to delete that border because now look, see, it's gone in the desktop version. So what I want to do, I just control Z, is to actually just turn it off in the mobile version. That way it still is here in the desktop, um, but doesn't show up in the mobile. Same thing, um, you know, I had to do a particularly <laughs> tricky spacing um, with this canvas. Um, so I don't need all of those things to show up in the mobile because I don't need it. It's not so tricky in the mobile. It just shows up just like this. Other places where you might see that, a lot of times, again, um, so like here is a border. So with this one, I want this to be in this box on the desktop version. And actually, I think that was a bit better spacing wise. Anyway, um, so I want this to be in this version here so that it kind of mimics that about look, but I don't need it to be in the mobile site because I think it just, again, it just kind of looks a little clunky if I have it in the mobile site. So yet again, here it is, I have turned off the mobile view. I can also do it the reverse way. So if I wanted it to not be in the mobile view, then, oh, then, <laughs> then maybe it's somewhere else. What am I? Else? Oh, I'm using it for this one. Okay, so yeah, so I've mislabeled it, but there you go. So I can turn it off in the mobile, or sorry, in the desktop version. So anyway, so that is a little bit about the actual, you know, what it looks like in the back end, everything that's kind of included in this section. I'll go into even more detail with that in just a minute. And uh, yeah, go into the next video.